uh, fighting masters <laughs> is at seven thousand nine hundred thirteen dollars and sixty seven cents out of twelve thousand five hundred. So it's going to happen. Yeah, it is. It's on the way. <laughs> All right. Well then. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. So uh, welcome to Half Life. Um, you might notice that we skipped the uh, tram section at the start. Uh, we just go straight to the first map that the game starts on, so just so that we don't have to sit through five minutes of cutscene every restart. So you're going to see me jumping around a lot. Basically, I'm just uh, air strafing whenever I jump just to uh, get some extra speed. And I'm timing the jumps using my mouse wheel. Because unlike in Quake, you can't uh, buffer your jumps in this game. You have to use a mouse wheel. OK, so right here, you're going to see me uh, grab the ladder and not die. I'm going to skip the elevator. Basically, when you grab ladders, uh, you don't take fall damage. Now I'm going to push the scientist through this door. This is a called NPC abuse glitch. It's probably like the most useful glitch in the game. It saves a lot of time. That one only saves like 10 or 15 seconds, but. It's useful in other spots. OK, so I'm going to push these scientists closer to the scanners just to save a little bit of extra time. Wow. Am I uh, good to read some donations? Uh, yeah, there's not going to be anything for the next like three minutes or so. Okay, we have fifty dollars from Gowerly. Source engine block for best block. Thanks for another great marathon. And we have twenty dollars from the Menestrel. Love from France. Uh, Thirty-five dollars from Delta P42. Big love from a longtime speedrun fan. And twenty dollars from Wormskull. Hey, Cube dude, have a nice run, matey. <laughs> And guys, we are aware of the game sound problem. We are trying to fix it at the moment. That probably goes to my keyboard. So we have $15 from the Crimson Helm. Hey guys, gals, awesome job this week with all the runs so far. This $15 goes to announcer's book. I will put it towards the Mr. MV into the baby cut. Shout out to me Mr. MV is, is a very state. talented voice actor. Uh, we have $20 from the Gene Genie. Hi guys, been watching awesome runs all week, but had to donate for the valve block. Thank you for all for what you guys are doing. Good luck, Cube Face, on the run. Should I check my sound? Uh, oh, it's plugged into the monitor. I think the sound source of the game is set wrong. Hmm. I was using the headphones at that one. I was getting audio through the headphones fine. Nice. 
Okay, so what I did there was I pushed the sample all the way back out, and that's going to be useful for a trick coming up. And I got up on top of this light to avoid a uh, teleportation trigger. Oh, there we go. We got audio. So I pulled that all the way out because the Vortigaunt that teleports in landed on it. Okay, the teleportation trigger is going to leave. And now I can do this. And you can get up here and it skips an entire uh, map. It saves a lot of time. So this is really where the run starts. Yeah, unfortunately in this game the intro sequence is quite a before you can start the run. So I usually would try to bunny hop through that window, but I missed that. So we're just bunny hopping through here. I get to read some more donations? Yeah. We have $15 from Sarandista. He says, hi guys. I'll gladly pay for a good cause like this. And good luck to the Half-Life speedrun. Uh, $50 from Inducar. He says, have a money. Uh, we have $50. Uh, and this person wants to say, Valve Block Height. That was the Source Runs, Gokneck, Blue, Blue Yeti, Cube Face, Rodrizid, and Zimbabwe. We have ten dollars from Glass no Glass Non CK. He says, "Great event, guys! I love the collection of games this year. Keep the good work for future events." Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is use the box. There we go. Try to uh, use the box to build up some speed. Basically, when you move objects in this game, you go really fast for some reason. And uh, if you let go while you're moving and jump, then you'll keep the speed that you had when you were moving the box, and it lets you go really fast. And then I talked through the scientist through that door to get him to open it. So that skips going through like a vent. So we're going to take a secret path right here, grab a shotgun on the way. And here comes another very important enemy abuse glitch. And the thing about, I mean, uh, NPC abuse glitch. The thing about NPC abuse glitches is, is that you can't save and reload in the same map that you're doing them in. It just won't work. So oh, we have boy. to grab Barney and scare him. Into opening this grenade and into opening nice. this door. <laughs> Good job. And that trick can be really annoying when you're first learning the game. Even when you're good at the game, it can be annoying. Yeah, it can. Rip that guy. <laughs> so you can actually talk to this guy in the middle of his speech, and you can push him through this door, which you're not supposed to do. And you have to kill him because. He blocks the door with his body, so if you don't kill him, he'll trap you inside. The door will keep you inside there, so that skips an entire chapter, actually. It's one of the more important NPC abuse glitches in the game. Saves a lot of time. So we're going to skip this elevator. And if you time this correctly, then you'll touch the ladder right there. I was going to jump off this tram and bunny hop, but I'm not going to because <laughs> I'm not having good luck. Yet. I'm playing badly, but it's okay. So now we just take the tram and 
make it to blast pit. So we do have a couple of prizes for this block. We have a Mad Cat's Triton headset with a Half-Life and Portal design. We ha uh, That's a $10 buy-in for that prize. We have Portal, uh, portal X-Fish Magnet um, by Sembrea for the um, during portal, portal 2 for $5. And we have the Portal Gun and the side signed Valve Orange Box for $15. Uh, buying. So if you donate fifteen dollars more uh, during this uh, block in one shot, you will be eligible for those prizes. Okay, so right at the start of this chapter, there's a pretty difficult bunny hop sequence. I'm actually just gonna redo it. It skips the uh, start of this chapter, so pretty important that you get it. Can you guys do a quick roll call? Yeah, I'm Cubeface. I'm Shadow Draft. I'm Cherna. There we go. I'm Zimbabwe. Blood Thunder. Nice. So in Blast Pit, we have to start the generator and fuel and oxygen. So we're going to start the generator first. <laughs> Is now a good time to read donations? Oh yeah. We have forty dollars from Wild Conjecture. The world needs more first-person crowbar games. Hundred dollars from Icewind. I've been waiting for the valve block all week. Good luck to all the runners. We have twenty-five dollars. Second time donating during SDQ 2014. Here's twenty twenty dollars more. I promised during the Skyward Sword run yesterday, plus an extra five dollars because I like Cube Face's glasses. <laughs> Uh, speaking of SGDQ 2014, if you want to promote this marathon on Twitter, uh, please use the hashtag SGDQ 2014. Okay, so I'm going to keep my bunny hopping speed through that section. It's actually pretty difficult. Those pipes are really slippery. And no fall damage right there. Keep my bunny hop speed through the vent by... Uh, Doing a double crouch, which basically uh, crouches you like faster, so you can get in the spots a little bit faster. Okay, just making sure I hit them. You don't want to forget those, or else you have to go all the way back. <laughs> no. We have a $50 donation from Don McLaughlin. He says, go cube face, woohoo! So proud of you, love, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mom. Okay, so you're not supposed to be out here during this sequence. I pressed the button through the wall right there, which is a common thing that you can do in Half-Life. And basically, if I uh, press the button when I was inside there, I wouldn't be able to get out. So this is much faster being able to just get out of here the second the tentacles are gone. Try not to take any fall damage in this next spot by landing on the side of this pipe. There we go. And I want to keep my health because this next part of the game is probably the hardest part. Oh. And I threw the grenade at the boxes there to uh, basically get health packs on the next map. These two maps overlay, so if you blow up those boxes, you can get health on this map. Those usually wouldn't be there. And what I did there was I skipped that entire chapter by jumping over the barrier 
And usually you would have to have a, uh, like a cart thing that you bring over here to break the barrier, but if you skip it and just bunny hop through the section, it goes much faster. So I'm gonna do a grenade jump right there to skip the start of this section. And this is why you wanna have a lot of health for this chapter because the grenade jump really takes out a lot of armor. So this is where the chapter starts getting hard. Okay, that was weird. Yeah, I believe with grenade jumps in this game in particular, uh, the amount of boost you get is dependent on how much health you lose to the blast. So having a lot of health is really important for some of them. Thankfully, later in the run, that becomes not so much of a concern at all. All right, I lost a bunch of health in that section, so that's not good. You don't really have any uh, spots to heal up throughout most of this chapter, so. Oh, I'm stuck. That's not good. So if you land right as the loading transition starts, then uh, you'll just get stuck on the floor. It's pretty unlucky. So when I'm shooting a grenade at like no enemies right there, basically I'm just trying to scare the enemies into not shooting at me, so or make them run away. So obviously this is why not taking the car is much faster because you can just bunny hop really quickly through there. And what you're supposed to do with that elevator is put a satchel charge in the elevator and send it up and blow up the satchel, but you can just throw a grenade through the ceiling right there. So I really want to get those guys, uh, I want their grenades basically because there's a couple sections coming up where grenades are extremely useful. Right there I shot a grenade at the floor to get rid of some trip mines at the bottom of that ladder. That was close. Okay, that's an interesting glitch. Basically what happened there was a uh, if you shoot a grenade under something, sometimes you'll get like a nuke effect and the grenade will become much more powerful than usual. Okay, so I just launched the rocket through the wall. Press the button through the wall and launch the rocket. It saves a bunch of time. And now I'm on a timer, so I can do whatever I want. So I'm gonna go get some extra health because I'm really low. These guys are in my way, so. Just grabbing health through the wall. Is now a good time to read donations? Yeah, it's a good time. Well, for those of you just joining us, this is Summer Games Done Quick 2014. Uh, we are supporting Doctors Without Borders, an international medical humanitarian organization uh, founded in 1971. And they provide independent impartial assistance in more than 60 countries to people whose survival is threatened by violence, neglect, armed conflict, uh, epidemics, among other things. And in 1999, uh, they received the Nobel Peace Prize for their effort. And this event is hosted by uh, Speed Demos Archive and Speedruns Live. Uh, Speed Demos Archive is the premier community for video game speedruns. There are uh, videos for over a thousand games. And the Twitter is at SDA Speedruns. Uh, and Speedruns Live is the best site to race video games online against others. Players of all skill levels are welcome join whether you'd like to become competitive or just race casually with your friend you can go to the front page speedrunslive.com for more information and to watch a wide variety of speedrun streams nice okay so this chapter has a couple of difficult uh bunny hop sequences i got both of them luckily okay so that object boost is usually easier but bad object boost right now <laughs> Basically with object boost you have to jump six frames after you let go. So it's a really fast and precise trick. Really difficult. Okay, so I shot a grenade right there to scare the Vortigon to opening the door because sometimes I mean for some reason uh Vortigons can open doors in this game. Okay, so I'm pretty low on health and armor, so if I was a bit higher I would be able to do a grenade jump 
and save a couple seconds, but I'm gonna play it safe. So you really want grenades for this section because you really need to scare away these uh, assassins. They do a lot of damage to you. Oh wow, I actually didn't open it far enough. You talked a second ago about having to jump six frames after you let go. A lot of stuff in this game is dependent on frame rate. Unlike the later Source Engine games, um, Half-Life on the Gold Source Engine is dependent on frames, not ticks. So altering your frame rate can really change how glitches work. Yeah, so what happened there was you get teleported into a dark room when you're getting uh, beat up right there. And what you can do is you can use uh, that health pack through the wall. So if you just move forward and strafe a little bit, then you'll be able to use it. Okay. We have thirty-two dollars. Uh, any this person wants to say thirty-two dollars for the awesome thirty-two bit powering this half-life run. You are all amazing. Thanks for the event and this unselfish cause. Greetings from Germany. So you can uh, keep your movement speed through that section. For some reason, the pipe after you get out of the trash compactor thing is a. Uh, it sends you flying like really quickly, so if you land on the cliff, you can make sure that you keep your speed without losing any health and go really fast through that section. And this whole chapter is kind of like a, an obstacle course. It's a bunch of stuff that you have to do. Lots of uh, bunny hop sequences. There we go. That it's good to, uh, yeah. yeah, it's good to keep it smooth right there and try to get through the uh, tunnel while you're bunny hopping so you can keep your uh, speed. Okay, so this water, I'm gonna use some push triggers. It's gonna look kind of strange. What I'm doing is I'm crouching a whole bunch at the surface of the water. And for some reason that sends you flying really quickly. And right there, if you go down to the bottom and hold use, you can actually use the uh, push trigger. And it, you move a little bit faster than when you swim normally. I have an announcement to make. Um, the Humble Bundle has now uh, raised over $75,000 for Doctors Without Borders. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So questionable ethics is probably the second hardest chapter, in my opinion, uh, with honor L being first. And uh, this chapter is difficult because if you don't have a lot of health and armor, there's a lot of enemies here that can do a lot of damage. So I'm gonna try to get these guys without taking too much damage. Okay, that nice. was good. I want to get the crossbow. It's really useful. Okay, so you shoot those guys so that they don't bother you. You got to shoot the server to uh, open this door. I really want this guy's grenades, so you got to kill him. Putting these trip mines here, one, that one's for the ground that's following me. And these two are for the head crabs. Shoot the glass to set off the trip mine. Now this section of the game is really difficult and kind of RNG based. Okay, I, I got good RNG right there. The, the shotgun guy, usually he'll run back into this room and your satchel won't get him. But he ran towards the satchel, which is really good. So he basically just killed himself for me, which is nice. Okay, that was smooth. Sometimes a headcrab can survive. You can press the button through the wall again. 
And you really want to scare these scientists so that they won't stop. For some reason, I think Cool Kid found this. When you uh, scare the scientists, you, if you don't scare them, they'll usually stop right there. So for some reason, if you scare them, they won't stop at all. You want to stay close to them when you're going up the stairs because for some reason they don't like going upstairs alone. So, okay. So that was questionable ethics. That was pretty good. Am I good to read some donations? Uh, just a sec. So what I'm doing here is I launched myself off the dam and got caught in the crack of the, the cliff there and it stopped my fall damage. So I think it's called the acute angle glitch. So it's pretty important for that section. And now you're good for reading donations. Nothing's going to happen for a bit. We have $15 from JMD. Great job to all runners. I've been watching the marathon as much as possible this week and enjoyed every bit of it. Thank you for supporting MSF and warm greetings from Switzerland. We have $250 from MTROP. $15 from Mitch Corson. Good luck to Cube Face in his Half-Life run. Can't stop the bunny hop. Okay, so that was a good section. The uh, You really want to wait for the helicopter to finish shooting, because if you go out too early, he'll just hit you with the missiles. Okay, so there's a Goss boost. Basically, what I did there was that pipe has uh, these corners, basically, that go up, and if you shoot the Goss cannon at a precise angle, then it'll boost you up and you can get out of bounds. It's actually uh, it's pretty easy to get out of bounds in this game, usually but uh, it's usually not too helpful, so that's one section where it's really useful. Okay, that was interesting. I took a lot of damage. But yeah, you can jump right over that gate using the Gauss Cannon. The Gauss Cannon's a really useful weapon in this game. So you can skip a lot of this section just by jumping over the fence. I don't know why they didn't expect people to do that, but skips a bunch. So I have a little bit too much armor for this section, which is a little bit annoying. Usually I would uh, do a self goss, which is basically when you shoot a wall. Uh, certain walls will bounce the damage back at you, and it'll boost you up a little bit. So but I couldn't do it because I have too much armor and not enough health. So I'm out of bounds again. You're not supposed to be up here at all. So I'm gonna break that door without having to use the uh, artillery cannon over there. And I'm gonna take some damage on purpose. Okay, that's good. And what I did there was I just took damage to get my armor lower because if you have too much armor, this grenade jump becomes impossible. You need at least below 25. Okay, so this section is really important to get correctly. Okay. So this door... Nice. Uh, this every door actually in this map is really special because some uh, programmer or map maker decided to give every door a negative one damage value instead of a plus one damage value, which basically makes the door heal you instead of hurt you. So I'm gaining one health every frame, so I'm getting 100 health every second. And I'm going to stay in here for a while just to get enough health so that I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the game. So, I lost track of how many cycles I'm at, but I'm going to stay in it for a while just to be safe. <laughs> Usually I would stay in for around 13, 11 to 12 cycles, but I'll stay in for like 14, hopefully. Yeah, from here on out, the damage boosting will pick up a lot. Yeah, the, the run really goes crazy at this point because 
you don't have to worry about your health at all, so you can just use grenades to to boost you wherever you want. And we have to do this to break the door. There's another way to break the door, but it's pretty much TAS only. Using uh, saves to switch weapons and shoot like instantly, but you can't do that. What's or this category, I guess. It's supposed to be single segment, but. Shoutouts to Quadrazid and the rest of the Half-Life 21 crew. Yeah. Half-Life 21 is a really crazy run. Everybody should check it out. Okay, nice. so we boosted over. Yeah, that's a tricky boost. It's a. Sometimes you just won't get it. The water can be kind of annoying and it'll keep you down sometimes. So the Hornet gun is pretty strange because the Hornets actually act as physical beings and when a physical thing gets caught in a door, then the door will shut, similar to like Doom. So what you can do is you can use the Hornet gun and shoot a Hornet at a door and it'll shut itself. And it'll it's just a faster way to close doors usually, but it's all, it also has another use, which we'll get to. That was good. All right, I have no Magnum ammo, so this is gonna be a tough trick. There's uh, another NPC abuse glitch here, which only saves around 15 or 20 seconds, but I don't think I'm gonna get it this time. So I have to kill all these Alien grunts. I did get it. Okay, good. Uh, I kind of play it safe right there. If you wait for six seconds, then you're almost guaranteed to get it. But obviously, it doesn't save as much time if you do it that way. So that scientist is usually supposed to talk to you for a while. But what I did was uh, I shot the window, and that put him into like a panic state for a bit. And then I threw a grenade pretty close to him, which scared him into opening the door, which skips his uh, speech, basically. It doesn't save too much time, but it's definitely uh, important. Okay, so Lambda Core has a couple uh, crazy tricks. All right, so that was pretty good. The uh, There's a double grenade jump right there. And what I did was I just uh, used a frag grenade and then switched to my AR grenade just to get up that silo like really quickly. And you can use one grenade right here and just strafe around that. And here's another NPC abuse. If you shoot this guy through the wall, he'll try to kill you. So he'll open the door. And he gives you time to get some ammo. And he also opens that door. So just by scaring him with the grenade right there, he opens like three doors. And that skip actually saves two minutes. So that's a really important glitch, and it's really easy. Usually the easy glitches are the most important ones in this game. Okay, so I died, so I had to re low. That's why it was black right there. For some reason, the hitbox of that floor just extends so far. It's really strange. Okay, so now we're in Zen. But yeah, that skip that saves two minutes. Basically what I did was uh, I shot a Hornet, and it disabled a death trigger for like half a second, which let me pass through it. You're, you're usually supposed to like fight a bunch of aliens off and stuff like that, but you can skip all that, so really, really important. So now we're in uh, Big Mama's Lair, as Cool Kid would call it. <laughs> this is the Gonark. And the Gonark is pretty strange. It's a weird boss fight. Basically, you have to do a certain amount of damage to it before it goes to its next section. So it'll kind of move around, and you have to deal a bunch of damage. Luckily, the uh, Goss Cannon 
deals enough damage with one fully charged blast to send it to the next location, so it's pretty easy to it's pretty easy boss fight in general. So you have to do enough damage for it to open the the gate or whatever it, it is. Now I'm going to try to save my Goss ammo for later, so I'm just going to throw some grenades at it this time. There we go. That was weird. Okay, so usually you have to wait for the Gonark to follow you, but you can actually just use a bunch of explosives to blow up this floor. So, usually <laughs> the Gonark would fall and it would break that floor, but yeah, you can just skip that. So, with a nice, precise uh, grenade jump, you can skip that whole section. We're gonna use the Goss Can to go quickly right here. All right, that was interesting, but whatever. All right. Just as a reminder, um, sub uh, subscribing to this channel um, does not only gives you access to the sub emotes, but all of the su sub revenue will be going to Doctors Without Borders. So just using grenade jumps to get through this, get through Zen easily. Okay, I think I have a grenade primed right now. Yeah. So you can do a double grenade jump right there to get through this. That's good. Okay, so here's the final boss. We need to make sure that we kill these uh, crystals because if you don't get rid of those, then he'll uh, regen all of his health. And now you just hide behind the spike and shoot at it. And it's probably dead by now, but you have to wait for it to open its head before you can deal the finishing blow. So get ready on time. Time. Thirty-seven, that's good. Whoa. <laughs> oh, good ending. That was interesting. Uh yeah, I guess. I think I have a save at the end. No, maybe not. This is the closest save. Well, I guess we don't get to see the ending. Oh. With the G Man. Unless you want me to do that again so that we can see it. Uh, I think we'd like to go to Half-Life 2, because for okay. once in this marathon, we're actually running a little bit behind schedule. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's a strange problem to have. All right. Yeah. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thanks for watching.